warning. Variable frequency drives output high voltages when running and can retain these charges for a long time after being turned off. Please ensure that your installation is done in accordance with the electrical safety requirements of your country and treat your VFD as live at all times. Even an unplugged VFD can kill. If you are at all unsure, please seek help from a qualified service technician to assist with the installation of your VFD. The install of a VFD is a seven step process. Please complete each step in turn and do not proceed to the next step until you have completed the one before it. Doing so will only cause frustration and probable failure. If you're looking to purchase a VFD, it is a good idea to first watch this video entirely to get an understanding of the MASO interface. That way you can choose a VFD that is compatible. If you are at all unsure, why not consider selecting one of the VFDs from the documentation as these are known to work. Before starting, it is recommended you have the following items available. The user manual for your VFD, a multimeter to take voltage readings, a pen and paper to make notes and drawings. Step 1. Configure your VFD. Before connecting your VFD to MASO, it is important to first get it working with external control. This is to ensure that the VFD is correctly set up and is ready to accept external commands. VFDs are complex devices and must be set up correctly before they will work. There are various methods of programming VFDs. Some use the front panel, some use Modbus, others use PC interfaces, but their programming requirements will be dependent on the input signals that we supply to control the VFD and the power requirements of the spindle that we connect to it. Due to the large number of VFDs available and the even larger number of VFD, spindle and country voltage combinations, it's not possible to provide programming details of VFDs. However, you should be able to get this information from your VFD supplier or from your VFD manual. Please note that an incorrectly configured VFD can destroy the VFD, the spindle, or both. These are not toys and must be set up correctly. MASO supports VFDs that have the following input requirements. A 0 to 10 volt DC input to control spindle speed. In this case, it is supplied from a variable resistor and is usually depicted as shown in VFD manuals. An individual switch contact that turns on and off the spindle in the forward direction. An individual switch contact that turns on and off the spindle in the reverse direction. This is optional and only needed if you intend to run your spindle in reverse. There is a range of VFD connection drawings available in the MASO documentation from various manufacturers and they all use the same basic input arrangement. That's on off switch for both forward and reverse and 0 to 10 volt input for speed control. The input names may be different between suppliers, but the interface is basically the same. The control method used by MASO to interface with VSDs is the most common, but beware there are some out there that use their own standards and these may not be fully supported by MASO or may not even work at all. It pays to do a bit of research before purchasing your VFD. Step 2. Draw a simplified diagram of your VFD. Before connecting your VFD, it is good practice to draw a simplified diagram to make the connection process easy. This will help prevent mistakes. In this example, we will draw a connection diagram for my Hunyang VFD. I've redrawn the diagram to make it easier to follow. Let's start with the connection drawing in the manual and strip away anything that is not a control input. 
Many people are intimidated by the manufacturer's connection diagram, but once you remove the connections that are not related to control of the VFD, everything becomes much clearer. Let's remove all outputs, frequency meter, transistor output, relay outputs, spindle, and breaking resistor. Now let's remove the inputs that we will not be using as we are only interested in the forward, reverse and spindle voltage speed control. We can remove the mains input and earth, RS485, current source input, RST, SPM and SPL. By doing this, we have now reduced a complex drawing down to six connection terminals. Step 3. Get your VFD working under external control. Now that I've been through and reduced my VFD down to six terminals I need for external control, I've taken my diagram and I've now assigned wire colours to each wire. Those wire colours match the wires I've used here for my two switches and potentiometer. That means when it comes to wiring at this end of the VFD, I know exactly which wire color I should be using on which terminal. It makes wiring this so much easier and I'm less likely to make a mistake. I can now test my forward and reverse switches as well as my speed potentiometer. Note that the VFD is fully closed while testing for safety before turning the VFD on. You can see in my test that none of my external controls are working. This is because the VFD is not correctly configured. I can however control the speed as well as turn it on and off from the front panel. I need to change some settings to point it to external control. Let's start with the speed control. From the manual, I can see I need to change parameter 002 to a 1, and it's already set like that. Parameter 070 needs to be set to 0, and this is for the 0 to 10 volt input. The front panel uses 0 to 5 volt, which will not work properly if left unchanged. This is a typical method of programming a VFD. There's a link that needs to be moved on the board as well. These are the sorts of things you may encounter while setting up your VFD. The VFD is now working with external speed control. Now let's configure the switches for external control of forward and reverse. I see from the manual we need to set parameter 001 to a 1 for external run control. We now have VFD on and off with our forward and reverse switches. Step 4. Draw a connection diagram of the VFD to Masso. Note that in our drawing for the spindle speed, we're using a 10 volt supply from the VFD connected to our potentiometer. This is needed to supply our 10 volts, but since Masso will be supplying the spindle speed voltage, we no longer need to use this terminal. We only need to use the VI and ACM. We start by connecting Maso's 0 to 10 volt speed signal, which is between spindle control pin 1 and Maso ground. We connect pin 1 to VI and ground to ACM. We next need to replace the switches on our drawing with our optocouple switches built into Maso. The optocouple will only work in one polarity, so grab your multimeter and set it to read volts. I'll use the 200 volt DC range. Please exercise extreme care while making these measurements as the VFD needs to be powered up for this and it will expose high voltage terminals. I connect my meter across the forward switch between forward and DCM. You can see the reading I'm getting is a little over negative 23 volts. 
I need to reverse the meter leads to get a positive voltage reading. Take note of which terminal the positive meter lead is connected to. In this case, the forward terminal, and mark it on the drawing. Do the same for the negative lead, and mark that on the drawing. I'll do the same for the reverse input to DCM, and mark this on the drawing as well. The optical switch will only work when the positive side of your switch is connected to pins 5 or 7, and the negative is connected to pins 4 or 6. Let's replace the forward switch with the forward optical switch, and remember to keep your polarity correct. Forward to clockwise pin 5. DCM to pin 4. Now let's replace the reverse switch with the reverse optical switch. Again, keeping polarity correct. Reverse to counterclockwise, pin 7. DCM to pin 6. Our drawing is now complete and we can move on to the next step. Step 5. Connect our VFD to MASO. And we're going to break this down into three steps. The first of which will be replacing the forward switch here on our external panel and bring it under MASO control. All the work we've done so far has ensured that our VFD is correctly configured and it's given us a wiring diagram to assist with the connections. And our first connections will be DCM to spindle control pin 4 on MASO forward to spindle control pin 5 on MASO. With that bit of wiring in place, I've turned on my VFD and powered up MASO. Note that the spindle speed control is still wired in and is controlled through my front panel here. So with that in place, I can now go to the MASO screen. We start by going into the F1 screen. The admin password is HTG, all in capital letters. We go to our spindle configuration. And here we need to select VFD. We next need to enter our spindle RPM when running at maximum speed. You'll find this figure written on the side of your spindle, and in my case that's 24,000 RPM. The spin-up delay time is how long it takes for the spindle to reach maximum speed. So I'm going to set a figure of 2 seconds or 2000 milliseconds. Lastly we need to enter a spin down time. This is how long it takes the spindle to come to a stop. And I'm going to put 5 seconds or 5000 milliseconds. I now click save and click the spindle clockwise button. As you can see my spindle now starts turning and if I click the spindle stop button it stops. That's all working fine. We can also turn it on and off by using the M3 command to turn on clockwise and M5 to turn it off. We'll be testing that a little bit later on when we do the spindle speed control, but let's move on to the next step. Step 6. Connect reverse to MASO. I've now connected up my reverse wiring as per the drawing here. We've gone from DCM to spindle speed control pin 6 and reverse to spindle speed control pin 7. I've powered up VFD and MASO. Note that the front cover is back on in place before I started. I've left the spindle speed control here, again still wired up because we're going to need that to set our speed for this test. Now if we go to the F2 screen in MASO, I can click the spindle counterclockwise button and our spindle starts. Click the spindle stop and it stops. With that now running, we're ready to move to the next step. Step 7. Connect the VFD speed control to MASO. I've now completed the final connections. That's the VI terminal in my VFD to spindle control pin 1. I've also connected the VFD ACM terminal 
to mass o ground. Now mass o ground is the negative of our power supply here, which I've taken back here to my negative rail. With that connection done, we next need to start mass o and make some configuration changes. At this stage, we'll just leave the VFD turned off. And now we're ready to test our VFD. I'm going to start by moving to the F2 screen. From here, I can go Control M, and that brings up the MDI screen. Now, the first thing I need to do is I need to give it a speed command. If I don't give it a speed command, it's got no speed. So when you start it, it has no uh, speed to turn. So I'm going to start with the speed command S1000. Enter. OK, now we've got a speed. Let's start the spindle. M3 will start the spindle. Before you do this, make sure you have the e-stop in an easy-to-reach place, just in case anything goes wrong. And here we are, 1000 RPM. Let's increase the speed. We'll go S5000, enter, and the VFD speed increases. Note that the speed is not exactly 5000 RPM, it's about 5100, and that's just to do with tolerances. We'll go M5, and the VFD stops. Let's try reverse, M4. It remembers the last speed it was set at, in this case, 5,000 RPM. I'll go S1000, and it slows down to 1,000. And we have the e-stop here. If I hit that, it comes to a halt. And that's it. The VFD is now installed and running exactly as it should do. So that just leaves us two terminals left to discuss on spindle control. They're terminals 2 and 3. Both of them are TTL or transistor-transistor logic level circuits. And pin 2 is for a clockwise signal, pin 3 for counterclockwise. They both run together along with the optocouples. So for instance, I have my meter currently across terminal 2. And if I enter command M3, you'll see the voltage jumps up to 4.5 volts, which is high. And if I enter M5, it drops back down to zero below. The voltage levels here are not sufficient to drive a relay or other output. They are logic levels only, and you need specialized circuitry to control them. However, some spindles can use them. Wherever possible, try and use the optocouples, because if you damage the transistor-transistor logic outputs, they are not user replaceable, whereas the optocouples are. And that's basically how to set up a spindle. I hope it's been useful, and I'll catch you guys later. Cheers.